QuickBooks Desktop 2024 Customer Prepayment Estimate Sales Order Receive Payment Forms. Get ready and some coffee because we're locking into some non-stop QuickBooks Desktop 2024. Here we are in our QuickBooks desktop sample company file we set up in a prior presentation using the enterprise version of the QuickBooks desktop software so we can practice the new unearned revenue feature within it. Under the view dropdown, we have the hide icon bar selected, the open windows selected, open windows open on the left hand side. In the company dropdown, we have the home page open. Now we're going to go to the reports and select the two major financial statement reports like we do every time company and financial let's start off with the balance sheet report i'm going to customize the report up top changing the range from 010127 to 123127 and then go to the fonts and numbers changing the font up to 14 as we do every time is that okay yes okay then then we're going to go to the reports drop down again company and financial this time the profit and loss the income statement first a word from our sponsor yeah uh, actually we're sponsoring ourselves on this one because apparently the merchandisers they don't want to be seen with us but but that's okay whatever because our merchandise is is better than their stupid stuff anyways like our accounting rocks product line if you're not crunching cords using Excel, you're doing it wrong. A must-have product. Because the fact, as everyone knows, of accounting being one of the highest forms of artistic expression means accountants have a requirement, the obligation, a duty to share the tools necessary to properly channel the creative muse. And the muse she rarely speaks more clearly than through the beautiful symmetry of spreadsheets. So get the shirt, because the creative muse, she could use a new pair of shoes. If you would like a commercial free experience, consider subscribing to our website at accountinginstruction.com or accountinginstruction.thinkific.com. And let's change that range. This time the range going from 010127 to 060637 because we want to see it side by side month by month not the total only in other words but the month by month breakout our first scenario was run in january second scenario in february the third scenario took three months from uh march to may this next scenario is going to be in june let's customize the reports fonts and numbers changing the font size back on up to 14 is that okay yes okay then all right so then let's go back to the home page quick recap of what we have done in the past we ran three scenarios so we could do some comparing and contrasting the first one the normal scenario where we don't get a prepayment we just enter the estimate the sales order remembering the sales order would only be there if you're in like the enterprise version they're both uh, transactions that aren't recording uh, any actual journal entry to the financial statements then we created an invoice and we also went up and uh, created a purchase order in order to receive inventory because we imagined it was for an inventory item and then we received the payment and make the deposit that's the normal process however we might have an unearned revenue situation or a customer deposit where we receive the payment first, which could come in like two major scenarios. One being where we sell a large product. In our case, it was the psychedelic surfboard where we would want to deposit in advance to us delivering the, the surfboard to make sure that we're going to receive the payment to lock the customer in to the transaction. The other being... Uh, if we have a subscription model, classic subscription models being magazine, newspapers, more modern subscription models being like online application services, in which case we receive the entire payment up front. We are, we, when we recorded these two types of transactions, we hit, we entered the estimate, we entered the sales order, but on the customer side, we then jumped to the receive payment recording it in the old method that we used to do which is a negative receivable which works pretty well from a bookkeeping standpoint but isn't quite right from a reporting standpoint and that's where the problem lies so this time we're gonna we're gonna do the new method 
where when we get to this receive payment, we're going to record not a negative receivable, not income, but rather a liability, which we'll call in this case, customer deposit, because we're imagining we're in that surfboard situation where we're selling a fairly large or expensive item and we want to get the deposit first before we complete the sale, possibly because we have to order like a custom surfboard. And then our next scenario will be one where we have the subscription model where, where we might rename the liability account as unearned revenue. Okay, so let's go through the process. If I, if I go to the, the customer dropdown, and let's just take a look at what we did before customer center. This is where our customers hang out. And in the last one, when we did the negative AR, it looks really nice internally. What we did is we, we, we made the estimate, then we made the sales order. And then on the sales side of things, we used the sales order uh, to create, our, or we then created a payment. So we received a payment for it. And then we created an invoice to finish it off. This payment, however, was recorded as a negative receivable, but it looks pretty easy to follow just from a internal bookkeeping perspective to try to just get the facilitate the transactions, right? So now let's do th the new one. We're going to go to the home page. Let's start with a uh, estimates and we're going to have an estimate and I'm going to call it this time for and this is going to be customer uh prepayment which is a weird name for a customer but the idea is that i'm going to try to separate everything to this being scenario number four that's going to be our customer name i will quick add it we're going to say it happened on 060127 tab 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 i'm going to make a new item which is going to be by the same name although i'm going to imagine it's that psychedelic surfboard uh, scenario again so someone a customer is in, wants to order a surfboard. It's going to be an inventory part. We don't have it on hand. He wants some crazy psychedelic airbrush on it or whatever. And we're like, okay, we're going to have to order it. So we're going to order that. Uh, but we're going to want the down payment first to make sure that this crazy looking guy is actually going to pay us, right? So we're going to say that the cost, let's say, is $100 to, to match the scenario we had before. Sales price, 175 same scenario we had before. Sales tax is turned on within the system. Good. We're going to set up an account here. So this is going to be a new account that we're going to set up. Set up the account, and I'm going to call it uh, a, an income account. Let's just call it an income account, and I'll call it customer prepayment for the customer prepayment, let's say income, something like that. So I can see a different account so we can again, separate our scenarios that we're running. So we're gonna say, okay, there it is. I'm not gonna say any inventory on hand because we will enter a bill at a future point when we order the surfboard. So there it is uh, down here, $100. The, the markup is 75, so we're charging 175. $13 is the tax. And if I was to record the journal entry, there is no journal entry yet because it's just a request form just as we've seen in our prior practice problems let's go ahead and uh, record it and then check it out if i go into my customer center we're going to say there's our customer there's our estimate no impact on the financial statements at as of yet so let's go back to the home page the next step would be estimate we create the sales order this also being an internal form, you wouldn't have this possibly if you didn't have like the enterprise version, in which case you would go directly from the estimate to the invoice possibly. But the sales order we can think of as in essence, locking in the customer. So the, the, this person wanted a surfboard and we're like, okay, here's the estimate. And now they're agreeing to it. So we're gonna finalize the estimate, creating the sales order. And then from the sales order, we're gonna connect to the receive payment. However, when we go to the receive payment, we're then going to turn on the prepayment feature so that we end up with a positive liability instead of a negative receivable. All right, let's do it. Customers, let's go into the estimate and we're gonna create a sales order. This is a sales order. So, so uh, the estimate has been copied to the sales order, good. That looks good. It's telling us we don't have any inventory on hand, which is fine because we're gonna use this simply to 
uh, request, and then we'll use the this, this sales order to uh, to make the bill at a future point as well, because we're going to have to do the custom order from the from the vendor for this particular customer that wants this kind of airbrush or whatever. So then it says you can tell QuickBooks to block any transactions that would result in a negative. Okay, so let's re let's do it. Duh, 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 duh. This is going to be as of 06021. Two seven. Let's say oh six oh two, just so we can have a different one day up. And duh, 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 so everything looks good. This is pulling in. We have the same kind of numbers down here, but like with the estimate, nothing new was really happening in terms of the financial statements. No journal entry, right? Same thing. Sales order. No journal entry happening. Internal document. If I save it and close it. We can see then we have the estimate, we get the sales order from an internal perspective. We could now say the sales order is locked in. I'm then going to collect or get the prepayment if that's applicable, or we would continue on doing the job or whatever we're going to do from here. In, in our case, we want to collect the deposit from the customer. So we're going to go into here and I'm going to go to the receive payment to connect it. Now, when I do that, it says receive customer payment on sales orders. You can now receive prepayments from your customers and add them to your current liability account. All you need to do is go to preferences and select prepayment settings. So we could go there directly from here. And that takes us to the prepayments company preferences. If you didn't get that pop up for whatever reason and you or you just want to go there directly, edit drop down preferences and then payments on the left, you want the company preferences as opposed to the my preferences. If you don't have the prepayments thing on the right hand side, you might not have the latest version or the enterprise version. They might roll this out, you would think possibly to, to all the desktop versions. But uh, if you don't have it, you won't see this thing on the right, right? So if you do, then you got the prepayments over here. So we'll select that we're going to turn on the prepayments. And then it says select a current liability account to record your prepayments as a liability. Has to be a liability account because that's the point. We're collecting something before we earn the revenue. We don't want to record it as revenue. We don't want to record it as a negative receivable. We want to record it as a liability, usually a current liability. So if I select the drop down, let's add a new account. And I'm just going to call it customer deposit. Notice the default is as a current liability type of account. We could call it unearned revenue, which I might change to and do next time because I think that's more appropriate in a, in a subscription model situation. Customer deposit seems appropriate in this situation when we're getting an advanced deposit on the work that we're going to basically complete later. So I'm going to keep it at that, save it. Uh, the name exists because I was messing with it before. I'll put a dot next to it. And I'm going to say, okay, let's do it. So there it is. And then it's going to close all the windows, I think, which is annoying. Yeah, quick. It's going to, oh man, QuickBooks. Now you're going to make me open it. Okay, whatever. Let's go to the reports and open up all the stuff again. Balance sheet, company financial balance sheet, customize going from 0101271231 fonts and the numbers changing it to 14. Is that okay? It is fine. Then okay. Maximize reports drop down company and financial profit and loss change in the range. Oh, one, oh, one, two, seven, two, oh, six, thirty, two, seven. And oh, no, yeah, that's right. And then I want to go from total to months, and then go to the customize fonts and numbers and change it to 14 2. Okay, yes. Okay. And then company drop down. Let's open that home page back up. All right. And so there's our home page. So now we went from the estimate to the sales order. And now we're trying to create a receive payment, but we didn't finish it yet because we had to turn on the prepayment. And now we have a liability account to post it to instead of a negative accounts receivable. So let's go back to the customer center customer center they're hanging out over there by the water cooler the customers are they're just chilling so we're going to go over here and we're going to say let's go into the sales order again and let's say we're going to receive a payment 
So now it says you won't be able to make any changes to this prepayment once you apply it to an invoice. So be careful if you need to change it, then you're going to have to actually delete it. I think you can still, I believe, delete it if you needed to and then do it again. But uh, you can't just adjust it. So you have to be, you know, be careful, be careful. So now this form looks like the other receive payment form, but now it has this prepayment thing on it. So what does a, a, the form usually do when you have a receive payment or customer payment form? It usually decreases accounts receivable. That's what we know that form always does. This one, however, does not because it's marked with the prepayment. And that means it's going to hit the liability account that we selected, which is the customer deposit. Note down here, too, that under the last method that we used, we didn't have anything down here. And therefore, when I selected like a $50 deposit, there was nothing to apply it to because we didn't have an invoice. We still don't have an invoice. What we do have is a sales order. You don't usually apply a payment to a sales order because the sales order is an internal document. But QuickBooks is using that sales order kind of like it's an invoice so that we can apply the payment out to the sales order here. So that's kind of how it's how it's working. If I go back to my my uh, worksheet on the on this side, I can say, OK, this time we have a receive payment form. And what's happening with the receive payment? Well, cash is going to go up because we're getting a deposit. And I created this other account called customer deposit now. So now we have this customer deposit account that I have added now. Uh, and that's going to be 50 and negative 50. So if I post that, cash is going to go up by 50 this time, which is right. And then here's the key. The customer deposit is going to go up. The customer deposit is not revenue because even though we got cash, we haven't yet earned it. And it's also not a negative receivable because we don't want it because it should be a liability. We owe the money back to the customer at this point in time, or we owe the customer the work. Under the old method, it was a negative uh, receivable. That was kind of the, the glitch in the system, even though it worked well kind of from an internal standpoint, from a reporting standpoint, external reporting, we would typically would need to do an adjusting entry basically to make it correct as of the end of the period. So that's going to be it. Now I'm going to make this a little bit smaller so I can see the record button at the bottom. So there's the record button. I'm going to save it and I'm going to close it. Is everything at, oh, wait a sec, Let's change the date. You're so lucky you fixed that because you can't really. So this is going to be from 060127 cash. Okay, everything else is good. Let's save it and close it. The payment date should be on or before the sales order date. Well, what was the sales order date on for crying out loud? Let me close this out. Let me, let me, let me close this. Something has gone horribly, horribly wrong. Uh, the pen, I'm going to clear this and then close it. So the sales order date says, okay, it's on 6227. Okay. So let me, let me say, I'm going to say receive payment. Uh, you won't be able to, okay, I know that. And then it's going to be 50. And let's say this happened on 060327. Is that okay with you, QuickBooks? Is that okay with you? All right. So $50. Let's do it. All right. Let's put this back up to 150. And then we have it so we can close this back out. Okay, so let's so here we have the internal documents look good. There's our payment. We expect later that we can go and order the surfboard and then enter the invoice that we can apply to the payment. If we go to the balance sheet, what happened over here? We went into undeposited funds instead of into our checking account, but it's still kind of like cash. I'm not going to get into the undeposited funds thing right now. But the other side did not go to a decrease of the of the accounts receivable, which it did before because the subledger dealt with the customer instead going down here to a liability account that we set up. Where did it go? Customer deposit. There it is. So that's great that because now it basically posts it down here, properly reporting it from an accounting standpoint. However, it is still a little bit more confusing because now we have to have two subledgers to deal with the customers. In other words, if I go to my reports up top and I go to my company and financials, no, my customers and receivables, 
and I look at my, uh, what is it? Customer balance detail report, customer balance detail, then I don't have anything in here for that customer yet because I haven't entered an invoice. I entered a payment only. So that's kind of fine because it, you would think, well, it shouldn't be in there because we don't, it's not an AR yet. It's not an accounts receivable related thing. But look at the last customer we had this for where we had this payment happen first and then we applied the invoices to it. The negative AR is wrong, but from just an understanding what's going on side of things, a bookkeeping side of things, this is pretty clear, right? Uh, it's kind of, so that's kind of nice. Whereas when you look at this, uh, when you have this other liability account, then there's gonna be another sub ledger related to the liability account. It's not, it's not gonna be in one place, right? So, so now I've got the customer deposit is also going to have a sub ledger. Although this is a liability, it's tied to the customers. Whereas usually liability accounts have sub ledgers that are tied to vendors, right? So now we're going to go into the customers and say this is going to be the uh, where is it? There's open prepayments somewhere around here. There it is. Open prepayments. So there's our fifty dollars there. So that looks so that looks good, but it's basically that added step. So if we compare this to the last process, if I go back into my customer center and think of it from an internal perspective, what's the difference between these two processes? Well, internally in here, it looks much the same. When I'm trying to finalize my transaction, I can see what's happening, right? I made an estimate, I made a sales order, I've got the payment, the payment looks like a prepayment. When I make the invoice, I should be able to apply the payment to it in a similar way as when we have that negative receivable, which we often like call a credit, right? That we're gonna apply to the invoice. You can see that over here, where the other method internally looked very nice as well. Same kind of concept, estimate, uh, we've got the sales order, and then we have this $50 payment. It's just that this payment was marked as a negative receivable instead of a instead of a positive liability. But from this side of things, the bookkeeping is pretty similar because then when I make the invoice, I could apply the payment out to it. So from this internal screen perspective, just facilitating the transactions, both of these work pretty well. So I, I like that. So if you can do that, so I kind of like the new thing that works quite well. However, it does also still lead areas for confusion for people to, to do funny things. So for example, if I go to the balance sheet over here, like you'll, if you have any experience with this undeposited funds, you'll note that that's a clearing account. It has its use, it has its functions, it's useful, but a lot of people will mess things up be because of it. it. It has another step which will mess people up sometimes. So anytime you have an added step, it could mess people up, right? The same thing is kind of true with this accounts receivable uh, being broken out now between accounts receivable and then this this other account down here for uh, for the deposits, the liability account. Now I can't find it. The liability account for the deposits right there. This, the fact that we have this other account that's kind of related to receivables adds another level of kind of complexity because now somebody could post something to that account without actually going through the normal kind of process and that would may mess it up, right? And the sub ledger would, could possibly get messed up. Uh, and when people are trying to figure out what is happening from a reports standpoint related to a customer, usually they're going to be looking at things that are related to the accounts receivable. So people have to understand that this is a liability account that is still tied uh, to a customer. Also, when we move it, when we actually make the payment and enter the invoice, QuickBooks is going to create a clearing account to facilitate that transaction, which will, which will, create, which will call a, cause a journal entry to be put in place. So again, we'll have another clearing account, which is another area where people could could cause havoc, right? They could post something to that clearing account. Uh, not as big a problem as this undeposited funds because the clearing account that they're gonna put in there is just used for this one purpose. But again, it creates another transaction just which adds one more kind of complexity into the system, adds a journal entry, and it adds this other clearing account that, that could add more to the complexity as well. So I'm just, 
trying to point out the pros and cons between the two system it works quite well we don't have to do an adjusting entry at the end of the month this way because you should have the liabilities properly uh, recorded it looks very nice internally uh, in, to in order to facilitate the transactions from a bookkeeping standpoint but you know the downside is of course that we have these two accounts we've got some clearing accounts we have an added journal entry which uh, could add some complexity and leave you know room for people to mess something up possibly that's so but we'll continue with this transaction finish it up next time